Good day everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to install Samba on a CentOS box. So the reason I'm choosing CentOS all the time is because it's very reliable, it's stable and it has a very small footprint on the ESXi server that I'm using for my lab. I have a couple of servers on that ESXi server and I have a couple of computers that I'm using to connect to that file storage. Uh, one of them Apple, the other one is a normal Windows workstation and also Ubuntu. So this server that I'm connected to had a problem last week. It crashed and the underlying hard disk crashed and I couldn't find a way to restore it. So I installed a new one. Fortunately, my files were residing on a separate hard disk. So there was no problem with the files. I only had to replace the hard disk with a new one. And if you're looking for a suggestion, it's a Western Digital 4 terabyte. Um, one of the red series that is reliable with lower RPM that provides you with uh, stability and you can always keep the system turned on and for CCTV and other purposes. So it's a very good choice for a server that you expect it to be up all the time. So let's install Samba on this server. So the case for you would be different because I've installed Samba once and uninstalled it because I lost the configuration file and now uh, it doesn't ask me for the dependencies but usually when you install it on a brand new server it gives you a couple of dependencies and then you have to accept installation of the dependencies so in this case I'm gonna say yes and install it one thing I'm going to do is to make sure that this comes online when the system boots up. There we go. NMB and SMB. And uh, one more thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to back up. smb.conf I'm going to name it oh, Samba oh, it's better actually rename it that's a better idea samba.conf.back if anything happens to that file at least you have a backup to revert to so let's touch uh, the configuration file here and then We have to configure it, right? So this is a configuration file that I'm using all the time for my Samba. I just remove all the junk from the configuration file. I don't see any advantage of using them. Let's just copy it and paste it right here. For those of you that use any other editor, that's still fine. It's not a problem. Um, I'm just comfortable with VI. I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to use systemctl restart SMB. So if I go to my share drive it's going to ask for a username and password obviously i don't have that i haven't created that account actually i have created that account but it doesn't have a samba password so i'm gonna assign a password to it well oh yeah yeah i haven't created that user so let's create the user along with the password let's try it out hope it works on the fly yes it does the only reason that i'm getting this error message is because i don't have proper permission to that to access to that file so let's take a look at the configuration it says guests not okay writable yes browsable yes and everything should be fine. Uh, let me just check the permission assigned to that. Documents, drive, 
yes, you can see that the the permission is assigned to that document is NFS nobody, and that's because when this server failed, I actually had a backup located on a different server, and I moved these documents from a different server to this server. So uh, the permission, I was kind of lazy to configure proper permission and um, didn't configure NFS very, you know, properly. And that is the reason you see NFS nobody. So I'm going to quickly change the owner to be root for that. documents and let's do it recursively there we go and then I'm gonna use set FACL modify for the user William the permission I'm gonna set is read writes and execute and the same path. All right. So if I go for, so if I go for get FACO, should be able to see the list of users that have access to that file, and I look like okay. So let's just restart SMB and. No, I still don't have access to that file, so there should be another reason. Yeah, you can see the problem is right here. Um, SA Linux is enforced, so that's the main reason that I'm getting access permission on that file. So I'm going to use chcon dash t. Samba share underscore t, and then I'll pick up that path and let's restart Samba. Hope this time everything's okay. just about right. So you can see the problem was SA Linux and now I am able to browse my files in the documents and if I want to add any other drive, any other share to that Samba service, I can just add the folder here in the configuration file right here and if I have a second user or third user, I can just specify the user right here by a comma, and I should be good to go. Thanks everyone for watching, and have a good day.